Hi, this is Pedia Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 191. Now we really only got one thing left to do in our character customization scene and that's to actually get our hair change or our hair color changing working. So let's go ahead, we'll clear the console and we'll notice as we click the buttons for the hair, uh, let's actually go to a more defined hairstyle so we can see more besides the eyebrows. And then when we click these buttons, uh, nothing happens like, as far as our hair color goes. So let's go ahead and head into Mono Develop. And let me see the GUI is right here. When we're clicking the hair, so the hair color buttons, uh, we're setting the selected hair color, which actually I should have really called the selected hair color index because that's really what it is, uh, to be the one that we're clicked on. And we're storing these up here, the textures in uh, this area of textures up here, hair color textures. So all we really have to do is just grab the proper one out of this array and display it. So let's come down to where we're actually clicking to get our hair colors. And well, let's add it. So it's hairstyle dot renderer dot material dot. And now these are textures. So we're just gonna wanna set the main texture and depending on what shader you're using, uh, if we come over, I'm just gonna start mine up real quick and take a look. Uh, we'll just click an eyebrow. I'm just using the diffuse shader. Now there are a lot of other shaders you could be using. Uh, well, I guess you could use a you know, parallax specular or something like that. Uh, you, you're basically gonna to wanna to be changing all these textures to the one you want. Since I'm just using a diffuse shader, uh, there's only one I need to change and that's just my my basic one here, which is the main texture. So I'll just come in, say main texture is equal to, and it was hair uh, color style or something like that. A hair color texture, that's it. No, that's the function. Uh, we'll just have to go up and take a look. Hair color texture, it starts with an underscore, that's why. So hair, color texture, and then the index, which in this case is going to be uh, selected hair color. And of course we could also use CNT here as well since it is in scope. And we're actually going to copy this line. Well first let's just test this. So we'll save this off. We'll come back into Unity. We'll start this up. And I'm actually going to go to a full hair. And then let's test it. So there we go, it goes to gray. Uh, there's my red, there's my light brown, there's my dark brown, there's my black, and there's my blonde. But when we switch hairs, it doesn't keep that setting. Uh, we can just simply come down to where we're loading the new mesh. And anywhere after where we actually load the new mesh, where we instantiate it, I just add that line that we just cut and paste from up top. So I'm just gonna do it right underneath and bring it back in so it lines up. So I'm just gonna do it right after it's been instantiated. So we'll stop that, we'll start it back up, and it actually started gray. Let me just start this again. Actually, it's not starting gray. What it's doing is starting uh, empty. So we should take a look at that. So selected index has not been set yet, or at least it hasn't been anything loaded yet. And of course we can verify this just by clicking on it and taking a look. There's actually no texture loaded. So let's come down and see where selected index gets set up. Uh, we should start it at zero. Uh, selected, uh, let me take a look at the numeration. So it starts off at black, which should be zero. And of course, if you want to make sure you could go, you know, equals zero, equals one. And I've actually read up on enumerations in uh, C sharp. Whoops, this is supposed to be three. And they actually say that it is a little faster, more efficient to actually put the numbers of these in there. Now, I'd, I've never have. Like, I generally just, if it starts off at zero and it just iterates and keeps going up by one, I never do, but 
it was an article I read that said this is a little more efficient. But let's just go up to my constructor here. So we're setting the hair color, select the hair color to zero. And I want to see if I'm, where I'm loading this up. So hair color texture. So we set it up there, but we're not actually loading them in there. And we're doing it down here. So we can't use the resources load method. Uh, we can't use the resources load method being called from the constructor. So we'll have to figure another way to actually load the default hair. Uh, so what we can do is actually just take this little piece of code. I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to come down to our initial load or load initial hair. And right before load hair mesh, I'm going to throw that in as well. Just like so. And that way there we actually have all of our hairs loaded uh, for the initial load. And we want to make sure it's before it actually tries to load the hair. So let's save that off and let's go see if that works. And we'll start it up. And there we go. It starts off black hair. Now it's going to start off with whatever color you have in your enumeration by default like the first one so if you actually wanted people to start off with brown hair or whatever color hair just make sure that that's in the proper order so we go ahead we'll switch to uh well let's go back to that bearded one i still obviously have some centering issues here but <laughs> anyway uh let's just test it so there we go and let's just switch to the gray and we'll go to the next one and as you can see i still have to do my centering, but that color is sticking. Uh, we'll go to red, go to the next one. There we go. Now, there was another thing I noticed when I was playing around with my hair colors. I guess if I select it again, uh, I'm gonna select gray, go to a full head of hair, uh, select the hair, and we notice that we have you know this texture here. And instead of having all these different textures for hair colors, if it's the exact same texture, instead of just retinting it, we could also play around with the, the color, the main color up here, and change that. So, I don't know, brown. Let's, let's change it. I uh, apparently did not click it properly. Won't let me change it. It won't even let me close it. We'll just stop Unity. There we go. I'm going to try that one more time. So we'll go to a full head of hair, switch to the white texture, or gray as I called it. And we could just change the color, as you can see. Now it's probably a little dark. Uh, let's come over here. We'll just lighten that up a bit. And now I've got orange hair. And of course, if you want a black hair, you could probably bring it down. You know, that's a little too black. Uh, let's just go over here and use different shades of gray. But you get the picture. Uh, instead of actually having all these different textures to load, you could initially just have one if you are using the same texture and change the tint. Okay, well, let's stop that. That's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in our character customization. I've given you several ways to actually customize different parts of your character. Uh, basically, pick the one that you feel the most comfortable with and go with it. Uh, the main thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have uh, the actual selection. So for this in, for this instance where I'm changing the hair color and the hair mesh, I'm going to want to make sure I have these two exposed. Whoops. Uh, because that's what we're going to be picking up with next, where we're actually saving uh, the selections we've made. And when we go into our game settings, where we're actually going to be saving them off, we want to be able to load these back up as well. So. Just make sure these are public, whatever method you pick. And later on, we're going to be making them static. But anyway, that's it for this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.